That's where I need to stop. And I can start. It's kind of putting a little power stroke to it. I'm working on the top plates. I have one already done. It's 20 foot long and it's a little bit under eight inches. It's a six by about a seven and a half. I've got this one completed. See, I've got the mortises cut in it for the posts. You can see I've put the little chamfers in there. Now this is the bottom side. This is what you will see. And I stopped the chamfers just a little bit before where the post will set. Now this is upside down the way we're looking at it, but the mortises are all cut in it. And I stopped the chamfer three, about three inches back from where the, the side of the post will be. And I did that all the way down. I really like the way that chamfer looks. It just gives a nice detail and it softens that corner. Post, I like to leave a little bit of the square edge, a nice section of it. It seems like it just gives it a little bit more of a bold look there around the post. You might say it kind of gives a look of strength. Now I have the other one up on my saw horses, ready to go. This is the bottom side that you're looking at. And that side there will be the inside face that you'll see. Now all the control will be from the outside on this. Now we'll get into this, we'll get it plain. I've already took a wire brush to it and cleaned it up. So we'll set up here and start planing on it. I've started my layout for the post where I'll be cutting these mortises in and I came in two foot from the end and then I went another six inches and made a mark and you can see I've got lines across here and I also made a little mark here on both sides here because when I start truing this area up which I want this completely flat and true like I was truing up for a notch area on a log. I'll, I'll probably lose these two pencil lines here, more than likely I will, but I'll still have my marks here to where I can reestablish these lines. I'll start planing this. I can feel just a little bit of a ripple there that my planter left, and I want that really nice and flat. Since I have four posts, I've got my space with, spaces divided out equally. Now this is the same layout that I did on the girders, except that I came in two feet from the end to begin my layout and that that lets this plate have a uh, two foot overhang on either end of the bridge and i came from my two foot in five foot four to the center of where my post will be and i just went three inches on either side of that five foot four and i'll make a mark and i'll take my square and i'll square that across now this is a uh, a reference actually for uh, when I true this area up and this is my little mark down the side just so I can find it again do that on both sides here and I'll get this area trued up with my level now it's just pretty close I can feel just a tiny bit of rock probably on that knot there where my planer may have rode up a little bit above that but I'll flatten all that down because I want all four of these places where the posts go, I want them to all read level all the way across where the post would set. Now I'll check it with my level. And that's getting pretty close. Just kind of using these little marks here as a guide so that I know that I've got my level square across my timber. I could have it cocked one way or the other and it might not read exact. So I, I like to have it right square across. And that's reading pretty doggone good. And I'll get the other two and then I'll be ready to lay out the mortise. In laying these mortises out for the post, it's pretty close to the same thing that I did on the girders, except I want the post pretty close to being centered on the, on the beam itself underneath. So I have my five foot four inches from the 
two foot end mark. I've got a center mark here and this tenon is five and a sixteenth. So I'll take my little ruler thing here and I'm just going to set that on, uh, well let's go over the number eight and I'll go to either side of that center mark. I'm going to come two and a half, just a little about halfway heavy and see if that doesn't measure five and a sixteenth and it does. So I can take my framing square make a mark across there which would be the end of the tenon. Now this side of the beam this corner is the outside and I'm having to bring all my cr control in from the outside so what I'm doing I'm setting my square up there instead of coming in two inches like I did on the on the girder I'm coming in two and three quarters and four and three quarters do that on both ends of it and I'll have approximately the same amount of wood from the inside face to the edge of the post as I do on the outside to the edge of the post. I'm going to draw a line on those points that I made and I'll score all four of these lines. Now I'm using an inch bit to drill down in there so I'm going to come in from the outside of that just under nine sixteenths from this outside edge and that will give me a guide to put the point of my drill bit and I'll keep the edge of the bit off of the line. I'll come back to that line with a chisel and clean all of that up. And I'm going to come in from the end of it the same amount, a little under nine sixteenths. Now I'll take my utility knife and I'll score that. I'm just covering the line with my little square and I'll score that. I'm always scoring on the waist side. I don't know if you noticed it, but I scored the wrong line. <laughs> I was scoring the line that was just a layout for my drilling. Well, I got the right one now. Okay, the last thing I'll do before I drill that is to take my awl where that little intersection is make a starting point for my for my drill bit because I want to drill straight down as straight down as I can possibly drill okay that one's ready to go I'm drilling these just like I did in the oak uh, for the girders I'm using my inch bit now I'm only going four inches or four and a quarter inches deep with these mortises I went five and a quarter in the oak because the bottom tenon on the post are a little bit long, well they're an inch longer and these are four inches so I don't have to go as deep I don't want to go too deep. I've got a piece of tape on here where I need to stop. And that's where I need to stop. That's where I need to stop. I'll come back and get the other corner here. Well, I didn't get finished with this timber yesterday. It was about six o'clock when I finally knocked off, and that's 
that's as long as I needed to go. But it's a new morning. It's a nice, cool morning, a little bit overcast. I've got my coffee. I've got sharp chisels. And I've got a new clean hat. After looking at my old hat I was wearing yesterday, it's pretty nasty, so I've got a new one. But we're ready to finish this last mortise and we'll get started on it. And then we'll be able to do our chamfers with the router. I've got everything laid out for that and I'll bring you along for that part of it. I'm just gonna start getting rid of the bulk of this wood. Now this little area right here, I couldn't really drill that because my bit will try to wander off back into this hole here or one of these two. So I'm just gonna have to chop that out with my chisel. Just get rid of all that waste. I'm staying away from that line just a little bit. I don't want to get on that line just yet. It's kind of work my way back to it. I like to do the end grain first, and you can take a little squirt bottle, and you can just miss that a little bit, and it kind of softens that grain. The end, going straight down on end grain is a little more difficult than coming in on the side here. And I'm just taking my little combination square here, and I just keep checking that. I know you can't see down in the hole there very well. I probably can't see it at all. And just make sure that I'm coming as square as possible off the top of the timber here straight down. You don't want it to kick out this way because it'll make it just impossible to get your tenon in there. And I'm just doing these little kind of a power stroke on that. Or, and sometimes I have to grab my mallet. And I can just set the depth of my square a little bit deeper just to check, make sure I'm good. And I am. Okay, I've got that side. So I'll start on this side. And I'll give a little mist in here. And I'll set my chisel right on that score line. When you're working these corners out up against this point right here and here you have to kind of work both both sides at the same time now i'll start checking it to make sure i'm getting it straight down or as close straight down as i can now just a little bit there i need to get rid of and then i'll check it and I'll set a little bit lower. Just a tiny bit right down there at the bottom. Okay. 
Okay, got that side. I've got this side cleaned out, so I'm ready to finish it up by doing this side right here. I'm taking a two inch chisel, and I'm holding out just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch from uh, this corner right here where my pencil is. And I'll just give that a light tap to start coming down on my shoulder there. Just setting that right in my score line. And I'll take my one inch chisel and I'll come right into that corner. Just give it a little push there just to cut that wood, just to sever it. Giving that a little bit of a rocking motion, just let it slice real, real gently. And I'll start checking it. I'm looking good. Just a little bit there, I need to. Okay, I've got it there. If I'd had a chain mortiser, I could set it up here and done this in just a fraction of the time that it took me to have to drill it and then chisel everything out. You still have to do some chiseling with a chain mortiser to get your ends and down at the very bottom. But I don't have a chain mortiser and I haven't convinced the lady bearded carpenter that I really need one but perhaps one of these days she'll see fit to let me get one i sure do hope so i'm starting to put the chamfers on and i do this with my router of course this point right here is where i actually want to stop and i just made my mark and i've got the same mark over here and this mark right here would be the edge of the post and i wanted three inches from this point to the edge of the post. Now my router, the way the bit's set up, it's two inches from the edge of the bit to the base of the router. And so I've got a mark right here that is two inches back from where I actually want to stop. And what I've done, I just took a board and I've clamped it on there. And I can just go right up against that with my router. There's my mark where the bit will actually start and I'm not sure you can actually see that little mark right here well you might be able to see it where my board is clamped on on both sides and it just makes it so much easier instead of trying to sight that that mark right there I can just bump against the board and go with it and I have two sets of clamps and two boards on here I have one where I start and one where I stop. That sure makes for a nice clean look. Softens the corners, but yet it'd be bold around the post. I love it. I'm ready now to cut this corner off of the end of the beam to give that the little detail that I like. I'm just going to use my skill saw for that if I've got room here to stand. I'm giving this a light sanding. Now what I'm doing this for is to kind of clean it up just a little bit for one thing. Is my pencil mark layouts where I could put my board for my router and then the the points for the the chamfer starts and stops down here. I can get rid of those pencil lines and just give this a little clean up in case there's a little bit of chatter from the planer. It just makes it look a little bit better. 